While the Medal of Honor now stands as our nation's highest honor, it wasn't always so. In the first 86 years of our nation's history, the military was actually against the idea of military decorations. That all changed with the coming of the Civil War. We have come here today to honor five unusually brave men. Uh, Medals of Honor are, are awarded mostly for one of two reasons. You're trying to rescue somebody, it's a medic, you know, typical medic is dragging somebody across the rice paddy and they keep getting shot, but they keep doing it. Or you're being overrun and you, everybody's dead and you run around, you grab grenades and you're holding them off. It symbolizes the ultimate in bravery and valor, the Medal of Honor, the nation's highest military decoration. I got my medal for saving the life of Lieutenant Tom Norris, which is another Navy SEAL Medal of Honor recipient. He was believed to be dead and I went back in found Tommy, rescued him, swam with him and one other Vietnamese SEAL on my back for several hours till we were picked up off the coast of North Vietnam. I got within three feet of the Chinese and looked back and I was by myself. And I remember thinking, you went to a lot of trouble to get here, there's no point in wasting the whole day. So I let out a war whoop and jumped in the trench with him. Man. And we had kind of a serious affair there for uh, quite a while. The idea for the Medal of Honor came in December of 1861 as a way to promote the efficiency of the Navy. Later that month, President Abraham Lincoln signed it into existence. The history of the Medal of Honor, of course, uh, begins in the Civil War. Uh, there were no medals at the time given by the nation. There were a lot of private medals given by generals or, or states, but no, no national medals. A short time after the Navy Medal of Honor was established, the Army created its own design. And the first Medal of Honor was presented in 1863 to Army Private Jacob Parrott. These were the two medals that we were given during the Civil War, you know, acts of bravery or, uh, you know, a guy who was a color bearer, taking lots of shots and saving lives. And so there were, there were a lot of medals given out during the Civil War. Nearly half of all the medals of honor awarded came from the Civil War. That's due in large part because at the time, no other military award was authorized. Take the youngest recipient of the medal, William Willie Johnston. He was awarded the medal at just age 12 for being the only drummer boy to return from the Seven Days Battle and the Peninsula Campaign with his drum. But in 1918, the Pyramid of Honor was established, creating three new awards which could be earned for lesser achievements, the Distinguished Service Cross, the Distinguished Service Medal, and the Silver Star. And in 1963, the criteria tightened further when Congress established new guidelines for who could be awarded the medal. A third Medal of Honor was created in 1965 when the Air Force introduced its own version. It took us 100 years, but we got it right. <laughs> this, this Medal of Honor, the Air Force, it's about 50%, I'm sorry, 50% bigger than the Navy and the Army, which is the Marines also, and they're so jealous. In all, 3,448 Medals of Honor had been presented, 618 of them posthumously. However, only seven medals have been awarded from the current conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan. I wonder why there haven't been more. I really do. I, I know there's, there's one that I, I, that I saw and read the action, and I'm looking at it and saying, my God, this, if this doesn't qualify, what does? And while only a select few can be called Medal of Honor recipients, Many have said the meaning behind the award goes far beyond the achievement of any one person. The Medal of Honor is, uh, belongs to every man and woman who has served, is serving, but is you know, going to serve our great nation of America. The bar is high. The level of scrutiny intense. Recipients of the Medal of Honor must demonstrate extraordinary valor. But how can it be incontestably proven that a soldier, sailor, airman, or marine performed his or her duties in such a way that deserves the nation's highest award for valor? It's 1968. A small unit of airmen comes under fire on top of a mountain while executing a secret mission. Who took direct fire? Did you see the explosion before you heard it? Was that man hit? The fog of war, and in the case of Chief Master Sergeant Richard Etchberger, faded memories, combined to make the investigation 
all that more complicated. It has to be eyewitness to, uh, to speak to uh, the valorous nature, uh, the valor, the honor uh, that, are, that are displayed by the individual. There were four survivors of the attack on Lima Site 85. The commander of the covert operation, Colonel Gerald Clayton, interviewed them all. Clayton recommended that Chief Etchberger receive the Medal of Honor. But then, Air Force Vice Chief of Staff John Ryan made it clear that a Medal of Honor would attract unwanted national attention. The U.S. was still denying any presence in Laos. That it was politically and palatable. Still, they wanted to honor Etchberger's sacrifice. His wife was, uh, was told fairly quickly of his death. Um, she was called to the Pentagon for an award ceremony wherein she was sworn to secrecy and she was given the true circumstances of what had happened. She was then, of course, awarded or pre presented his, uh, his Air Force Cross. I wanted to make sure that uh, that yes or no, that this was going to be, it was going to be decided based on the merits of it, not based on any political uh, pressure. When the case was finally declassified in 1985, Etchberger's son, Corey, requested the award be upgraded. So the investigation began anew. We're talking from 1968, memories fade, um, uh, stories are embellished, etc. Uh, one member who had given a statement said he was the only person that had a radio. That was Tech Sergeant John Daniel. But Captain Stan Sliz indicated he also had a radio and was communicating with overhead aircraft. The staff at the Air Force Personnel Council determined each did have a radio. But because they were 100 to 200 meters apart, they weren't aware that they were communicating with the same pilots. Even things as simple as who was the first person to be put on the helicopter, who was the second person, um, uh, time of day, um, locations in the cave, every, everything to the, to the smallest detail uh, has to jibe, so to speak, for, uh, for these to fly. In the end, it all flew. The cross was rescinded in favor of the Air Force's Medal of Honor. Recognizing that the decision makers are widely separated from the battlefield in terms of geography and time. Okay. Closing that gap is the goal of the Military Awards Branch of the Army's Human Resource Center of Excellence at Fort Knox. We gather witness statements, operational reports. Uh, in some cases we've gotten, we've even had uh, video feed from unmanned aerial vehicles. These graphics were created to back up the case for Staff Sergeant Rob Miller. They show the unit position, positions of the enemy, and clearly describe Miller's forward engagement, drawing fire away from his team until he was mortally wounded. The Army even later created a battlescape, further detailing those events. So he continued to charge forward through the open area, engaging multiple elevated insurgent positions, drawing their fire away from the trapped ODA and ANA members. Still. Despite the intricate detail provided at the unit level, there are often questions. There's five people referenced in an, a in an action. We've got statements from three. Where are the other two? It's possible that those two people didn't agree. It's possible that those two people saw something different. Once a packet is complete, it goes before an awards board. They want to fly with you for some reason. I guess it's because they think you're the best. In the case of Colonel Bruce Crandall, a Vietnam War helicopter pilot whose story is told in the movie We Were Soldiers. We'll be landing under fire, gentlemen. The board decided the recommendation for a Silver Star should be upgraded to the Medal of Honor. But in 1917, 864 recipients lost their medals after a congressional investigation revealed members of a Civil War volunteer regiment had received the prestigious award simply for re-enlisting. Uh, we reward uh, for true deeds and true action. The standard is high, and it should be. In those clouded eyes of folks who uh, are honestly getting a little bit older, uh, for them to know that there, A, is justice, and someone that saved their lives uh, is finally got their reward, so to speak.
if you can do this job and go through a week and not read something or see something that just gives you a, kind of chokes you up a little bit, you're probably in the wrong business. For the last 40 years, all Medals of Honor have been awarded posthumously. That is, the recipient died in the action for which the award was given. To be a living recipient is something else entirely. The Medal of Honor is a life-altering event in ways that only those who wear it can describe. The day I received it completely changed my life. I was not the same person after that I was the day before because I had an added responsibility that I'd never had before. I think I was just kind of embarrassed because there were so many people who had done what I had done and, uh, and got very little recognition for it. I never felt that I deserved my medal, never will feel I deserve my medal. It, it doesn't sink in. All of a sudden, here you are, you're surrounded by general officers, and here comes the President of the United States, and he's thanking you for your service. The real honor of the Medal of Honor is that a handful of men Young men thought I was worthy of it a long time ago. I'm on a stage with these people in the family of, of Lance and uh, I'm wondering, you know, what am I doing here with these folks? You, know, you just don't feel like you deserve to be there. Well, it has always helped me stand a little straighter, maybe a little taller to, to make a little better decisions because I realize that although it's the person that may be making these mistakes, that it's the Medal of Honor, so I don't want to make mistakes. Each of us were awarded our Medal of Honor. We took on a mantle of responsibility that said, you represent the service and the sacrifice of many, many men and women that have served, are serving, and lost their lives serving. And we take that very seriously. We're just, we're just the messenger that has been entrusted the Medal of Honor to carry that message. I had a lot of help in, in getting the Medal of Honor because uh, I was a company commander. I had 130 Marines and Navy corpsmen, and uh, they're really the ones that have gotten the medal for me. Uh, so I kind of wear it for them. I know when I uh, received my medal, Jimmy Doolittle was the first gentleman I met. He said, Mike, welcome to the greatest fraternity of men in the world. I think we feel bound together because we all experienced, uh, we were all experienced combat, uh, which is a uh, horrendous thing for anybody to have to be uh, a part of. It is a family bond because we have grown up together. All of the Vietnam Medal of Honor recipients, we've known each other as brothers for 40 years. Band brother, yeah, you might say. We just all stick together, we all come to these and uh, and then, uh, you know, look out for each other and take care of each other and everything. We only have 87 living recipients and it's like a family. In over 40 years, I've lost. When I came in, we had over 300, say 380 Medal of Honor recipients and now we're down to 87. So every time, and you, people like Admiral Stockdale or, or the father image or General Doolittle or all these other great friends of yours, Nikki Bacon, which just passed away, and these other recipients, they're like your brothers. It's a great feeling to get together with them because we can talk freely with each other and know what we're talking about. Whereas with the general population, and I don't say this in a derogatory remark, but uh, a lot of them don't understand uh, really what we went through. And we have to kind of play it a little cool, you know what I might say. Now we get together, we don't tell war stories, we talk about our health. You get very good training on how to do your job in the military. There's no training to tell you how to wear this. It is much harder to wear that medal than it was to receive it. At times it gets heavy because um, you're pushed and pulled. And you got to be able to uh, bend with it, you know, and do what people expect you to do. I guess it would be like any kind of celebrity. They're always, you're always on parade. People are looking at you, watching you a little bit, especially in the military, to see if you're out of line because the medal represents so much of America. And you just don't want to do anything to disgrace it, to embarrass it, uh, to embarrass your fellow recipients or America. I always felt I had to do more than my peers did so that 
everybody would say, yeah, you've, you earned that. I don't look back at it very often. Um, my philosophy is um, it happened. I was lucky to come through it. In my mind, I believe in miracles because it was a miracle that I made it that day. I think it's a distinct honor that people still remember us. They, uh, we come from a long time ago. They, uh, in my case, 60 years ago. The day I got home, it was the best day of my life when I was released. If people ask questions, I'll answer it. But um, you know, then if you, they want to know, if, if they want to know types of torture and so on, I just pretty much refuse that. But uh, uh, oftentimes after those conversations, I'll have some real bad dreams or nightmares. But, but life has been good. And I've had opportunities that would have never come my way. I think no one ever said in the morning, you know, I'm going to go out today and I'm going to get the medal of honor. You know, if they did, they're dead. Our desire to never be another one, which means no more wars. But any time you got war, you're going to have things that happen. <laughs>